one. All right, welcome back. We are doing a Philadelphia Phillies segment. Thank God, I'm Shane. He's Rob. Um, we're doing. Been waiting for this all day, haven't you? I have been. I, no yeah, price. I um, but uh, yeah, so Philadelphia Phillies, they uh, they make a trade. They make a trade that's extremely impact. That's extremely impactful. <laughs> uh, yeah, right. They acquire J, uh, JT Romuto from the Marlins. I don't know about you, dude. I, so I saw every name that's ever played for the Philadelphia Phillies in the history of the Philadelphia Phillies was available in this trade, according to all of the different blue check park people that we follow. So I was losing my shit all day. I thought that we were going to send them 37 guys for JT Romuto, and that was it. Um, so I was pretty pissed off for most of the day. Um, but the deal ends up working out. They do trade uh, Sixto Sanchez, which is a guy who, uh, you know, again, anyone who's, who's listened to, uh, you know, we talk about the Philadelphia Phillies over the last few years. He's a guy that, um, you know, that I've been extremely excited about. Um, yeah, so it's difficult to, to see that piece go, but it was a necessary one in this particular trade, um, or at least that's that was the true centerpiece of it. Jorge Alfaro, he goes over, it only makes sense. Um, you know, acquiring their catcher, they're going to need a young catcher too. Um, Will Stewart and international slot money. Um, you know, so all things considered, given how many names were mentioned and the possibility of third, fourth, fifth, and sixth prospects and major league pieces that were already ready to be included in this deal, I'm pretty happy that it ended up only being essentially six, not only because six to six to, um, but six to and Jorge. Um, and then another single-A pitcher. Um, so what are your thoughts so far on, on the trade? Take me through what you felt. I don't know about you. Like I said, I was on Twitter all damn day. I think by noon I had like 18% battery left on my phone. It was absurd. Um, it's a risky deal, you know, getting rid of 6 though. Obviously the team's top prospect has a ton of potential. But with that being said, I know you're a big prospects guy. I'm not a big prospects guy. I prefer the proven players. So I'm perfectly fine with dealing a guy who you don't know what he's going to be at the major league level in exchange for a guy who was an all-star, who Bryce Harper loves, who's arguably the best catcher in all baseball right now. Granted, there aren't that many great catchers out there, but, you know, a really solid uh, player, good hitter, um, will show some more power playing in the hitter's park. Um, excited to see what Real Muto can do for the Phillies. Yeah, you know, me too. You know, it, it's been, yeah, I feel emotionally like I kind of go through that that wave with this whole process. Um, you know, I, I was pretty adamantly, I don't want to say against getting and acquiring Real Muto. Um, you know, that certainly wasn't the case. When you have the opportunity to upgrade, you know, to arguably, as you said, you know, the game's best catcher, um, you obviously want to entertain that thought and idea. Um, you know, as package the game being, swirled around and names were mentioned. That's where I was pretty turned off by. Um, you know, I think last night I had tweeted and said, you absolutely do not include Sixto Sanchez in this deal. But to me, that's if that's what they want, I hang up the phone. Um, so I guess, good thing I'm not the GM of the Philadelphia Phillies. I'm not <laughs> sitting here with T.O. Muto right now, because I would have for sure hung up the goddamn phone. Um, you know, but... I've, you know, obviously, you know, in the moment, I just kind of wanted something to happen, um, you know, and I needed something to happen because I needed to know which one of every Philadelphia Philly in the history of the organization was still going to be Philly after this deal because I felt like we were sending the whole organization to Miami. Um, so I needed my own sanity and mental health to know that uh, guys like Moniak and Adam Hastley, um, you know, even Adonis Medina, um, Spencer Howard, those guys were still here. And they are, um, you know, so from that standpoint, you know, that, that trades it, um, you know, and then given, you know, that we're coming out about what the Mets offer was going to be and what the Braves would have been, um, you know, and their pack arguably could have offered a little more. So it, it's curious to me as to how the price helps to, to just that. So I'm convinced that, that Clintac is, um, is just thieving everyone. I don't know how he pulled off the cigar deal. I don't know how he's pulled this deal off. So now, in Clintech, I trust. Go do your thing, you little weasel-looking motherfucker. I don't care. <laughs> I'm cool with it. 
Um, you know, I trust you 110% uh, at this point. Um, you mentioned it earlier. Um, you know, I, I think it's been a little blown out of proportion, you know, the, the Bryce Harper love for, for JT Romuto. Um, you know, I think that, you know, what he's said in the past is something that good players say about fellow good players, you know, in, in the game of baseball. I don't think they're or in any sport. You know, I don't think people are sitting there and they're saying, you know, I, I don't think this guy on my team he's is better. That, that's I mean, awesome. all I heard is what he said about him at the All Star game, which you know it's kind of a heat of the moment thing. You know, they put the camera on him at on. He's on TV. Uh, I don't know what the deal, what was happening in that time if Real Muto was at bat or something like that. But this is just kind of a heat of the moment thing. I don't think he's actually thinking too much about it. Probably not. Um... You know, I don't know how much this this sways a decision. That's probably I'm firmly of, of the opinion that both of these guys know where they want to go, and both of these guys know where they're probably going to end up anyway. Um, you know, and even if those two destinations are not the same, um, you know, I, I think that Bryce has known where he's going to go. Um, you know, I think it's for him, of course, it's it's going to be about the show, the production, how you know. How much money can we get from who we're going to go to? You know, what last stop just efforts can we make? Um, you got to squeeze out, you know, more sense at this point. Um, I don't know. Goddamn how Yankees are throwing their hat back into the ring now. No, I, I mean, look, I don't even know when when the judge interview was. I don't know if that was recent or if it was something that was earlier in the off season before the Yankees had already pulled out. Um, I love how Twitter's freaking out that they saw a video of Bryce Harper in the batting cages and he appears to be clean shaven and that automatically means the Yankee right now. <laughs> I think people are just new level stupid. If they, if they, if they, if they, 2019 they, stupid. Pretty much, man. Um, you know, so bottom line is, uh, you know, I, I don't think that Matt Klintek makes this move and trades Sixto Sanchez without already having a pretty sure idea that he's going to land either Bryce Harper or Manny Machado. We certainly think that it's Bryce here on this podcast, um, but uh, but one of the two of them because I, I just you don't make a move for a 28 year old catcher in the NL um, and ship off your best prospect, a prospect who's been compared to pay, you know the next Pedro Martinez. I don't think you do that unless you have a pretty damn sure opinion that you're landing one of the two premier free agents. Um, what's your thought on, on that process and, and Plantax line of thinking? Yeah, I agree with you. It's uh, real Muto is a nice player, but in this situation, you kind of view him as a complimentary piece to uh, essentially to when you bring in uh, Harper or, or Machado, you know, he's not the end all be all to the off season. One of those two guys is, and you don't make that move. You don't give up a top prospect unless you know that one of those top two free agents is going to sign with your team. So I think that Clintac is pretty confident that he's going to get one of the two. I'm still leaning. It's probably going to be Bryce. Um, I don't know where where Manny's thinking right now, but I think Bryce is going to be a Philly. Uh, hopefully soon, but probably not until halfway through spring training. <laughs> I don't know, man. It could happen tomorrow. I, I anymore. I have no fucking idea what's happening. Uh, you know, in, in, in mm. baseball. Every morning, I I wake up. I get ready for work. The first thing I do when I wake up, I open my eyes, is I look at my phone and I see if I got any notification about Bryce Harper. And so far, I've just been waking up disappointed every single day. It's a tough way to start the day. It really is a tough way to start the day. But then I get my coffee and I'm fine. See, and that's the first thing I do. I stare across. <laughs> And I look at a coffee pot next to the bed, and I'm like, for all the convenience this has brought me, just to, to know that I now have a coffee pot right here. <laughs> it feels so good. But I never have a coffee cup there. And that's the goddamn problem. Well, you got to get a coffee cup, then. I know. I have like 800 of them downstairs. I have no idea what the hell I'm doing. <laughs> um, one of these days. One of these days I'll grow up. Um, but uh, so, we <laughs> so we've had, let me, let me bring this up real quick. Uh, you know, numerous people, you know, on Twitter sitting there and they're, they're putting out their, their thought on, you know, what the Philadelphia Phillies lineup is going to look like. Um, you know, and, and we've all kind of talked, talked this to death, but 
you know, with another piece now in place. Um, so, hooker? Is that a hooker? No. You sure? I hope not. Just making sure. I just saw you <laughs> hold a hand up. I didn't know why. I, I didn't know if you put a tie on the door or not. Um, you know, but uh, but to take a look at it, let's just go around the diamond real quick. You know, we we've made a a defensive upgrade to left field, bringing in Andrew McCutcheon. Um, you know, one of my predictions for for the season that we covered on the podcast. Um, spoiler alert: if you haven't listened to the podcast yet, is uh, I believe that uh, you know Andrew McCutcheon's going to mirror the first half of 2009 Raul Banez and that he's going to carry that through the duration of the season. Um, you know, so that's an upgrade, um, you know, out there on left. Uh, center field, Adubo Herrera, you know, we, we've we read all the ports at this point. You know, he, he's coming to, into camp in the best shape that he's been in, in several years. Um, you know, he's obviously flashed the potential to be, you know, extremely talented and extremely consistent. And then there are those moments where he looks totally baseball stupid and unmotivated and uncoachable. So it, it's, going to be about you know what can Gabe Kapler and that coaching staff do to, to consistently get through to him and I think if they do they're going to have a, an extremely special player out there in center field at a really really reasonable price um, you know and we'll have him there for, for a long time um, we assume at least at this point we both are on the same page that Bryce Harper is going to be a right field which is a huge upgrade over anyone that is going to be out there for us um, Third base is a bit of a wild card for right now. We know it's Michael Franco. Um, can't move on from him soon enough. fucking know. But uh, right now. Michael Your hatred Franco, of Franco is pretty well documented. It is. It, it Well, you know what? He's an uncoachable and he's an idiot. Um, you know, he, he has the tools and he has the ability. And he just consistently goes. You know what he's like? I'm going to tell you what he's like. He's like women who sit there and wonder why the hell every time they go for dumb ass guys. The same shit keeps happening. And then they do it again, and you're like, well, you didn't fucking learn? So I guess he just wants to keep opening up his hips. I guess he keep just wants to – he's garbage. He's stubborn. Trying to hit the ball 500 he's, feet with every damn swing he takes. He's insane. The guy's just a moron. So we can't move on fast enough. But for right now, it's – he's whatever. Michael Franco's a guy at third base. Hopefully it's Mastoska, uh, you know, soon. You hear that? That just, like, lisp thing that I had going on? because I'm overly excited about the possibility of moving on from Franco. And I'm shocked that Moustakas is still on the market because he's a damn good hitter. He's a damn good baseball player and really getting no attention from anybody. I, think, I mean, the dude hit, like, almost 40 home runs playing in that cavernous ballpark out in Kansas City two years ago. So you got to give him a little bit a little bit more respect than he's getting. And I'm well, kind of shocked that he hasn't gotten any big offers yet. A lot, and we've talked about this too, you know, a lot of this stuff is Bryce Harper and Manny Machado not signing yet. It does impact so many other players. It does impact so many other teams. Um, you know, if a team is dead set on, you know, Manny Machado, thinking that they can get him on a one-year deal, on a prove-it deal, um, you know, that, that takes them kind of out of, you know, Mustafa's Mustakas's range, you know, they say no, you're you're off books. I'm not even thinking about you. Um, but if Manny goes out and, and you know gets himself a you know a mega deal like he is wanting, well now you now you pick up the phone. Now you call a player like Moose. So um, you know it's this off season, uh, you know, and baseball off seasons in general are just difficult. Um, you know, and this process has certainly been a bad one. Um, but. Uh, you know, continuing through, moving along the diamond. You know, shortstop, huge upgrade in Gene Segura. Um, second base right now, it's still Cesar. Um, you know, LJ is is pretty team Cesar for forever. Um, to say the least. Yeah, I am. Uh, I'm certainly a Scotty Kingery guy. Um, but uh, you know, right now as the roster stands, you know, it's going to be Cesar at second base, and that's not a bad thing. He's fine too. Um, you know, Reese moving back to first, that, that's huge. Um, and then today's edition, you have uh, Real Muto behind the plate, which makes your offense. Him and Segura alone, man, I can't explain how exciting that is. Uh, you know, to sit there just from a from a baseball fan's perspective, to see two really, really good hitters in a lineup that didn't really feature any good hitters. 
um, you know, we had guys who could draw walks and, uh, you know, and Carlos Santana, you know, with the occasional pop, you know, we, we had streaky hitters in um, Reese Hoskins and in um, Oduwa Herrera. You know, we had streaky hitter in with surprising pop in Nick Williams. And then you had fake stats from Jorge Alfaro and fake stats from Mike Alfranco, uh, you know, who, you know, would lead you to believe if you just looked at numbers that they were far more successful than they truly were. Um, but we added two legitimate, consistent offensive pieces uh, who are both extremely well-rounded for that, uh, you know, for that as well. Um, and then you have Andrew McCutcheon, you know, he's up, getting up there in age, but he's um, is still an extremely productive player. So even right now as the roster stands, we are so significantly better than what we were. Um, you know, and... Uh, this is so far without Bryce Harper and Manny Machado. Um, so I still think that the next move of the Philadelphia Phillies is going to make is going to be Harper uh, or, or I do think that now is the time of the and they're going to acquire a pitcher. Um, whether it's a trade, whether it be uh, you know, free agency. Uh, you know, we've, we've talked about it a lot. Uh, at this point, he's down the title the guy most people understood last year that Jake Carrier was going to be a target of the Philly Phillies, um, you know, just out until March. Um, you know, but it's been pretty well talked about for this point. Dallas Keuchel's been a guy that, that they've been interested in. Um, do you think it's Dallas Keuchel that's the guy, or do you think there's someone else out there at this point? I think uh, Keuchel's probably the guy, although I'd still love to see them try to pull a trigger on a bunk garden trade, I don't think it's going to happen now, especially with six still out of the equation. Um, so, yeah, I'd probably be banking on it being Keuchel. Um, I don't know how much they would be willing to pay him, given that he's kind of fallen off for the past couple of years. He's certainly not what he was in uh, 2015 or 2016. Um, but, uh, but, yeah, if there's going to be one guy in particular that they're going to zero in on, I think it would be Keuchel. Yeah, you know, I think at this point it's one of those things where it seems kind of inevitable. Not unlike Bryce Harper becoming Philadelphia Philly, which I still believe is inevitable. Um, but uh, you know, Keuchel is the one who it just makes sense at this point. Um, you know, just given the the conversations throughout the off season, um, you know, I think that this process. I don't think that he's going to get what he believed he was going to get. You know, I don't think he's going to get the five and six years. Um, you know, I don't think he's going to get, you know, 120 million dollars. Um, you know, I think I think that the Philadelphia Phillies could probably sit here and get him on a three, three or four year deal at this point worth 20 to 25 million dollars a year. Um, you know, is it ideal money? Not particularly, but for what the market is and for who's available, it's probably the best we're going to do. Um, which take that for what it is. Um, I'm with you. I'm still 100% on the on the Bumgarner thing, even though they're not going to they're not going to you know pick up the phone right now. It's a mid season deal, um, but uh, but damn that would be fun. Damn Madison Bumgarner and, and Citizens Bank Park would be fun. Um, He's but, a fun pitcher to watch. I love having a guy who's not not afraid to brush back a hitter, start a fight, something like that. You know, he's mixed it up with the ICL Puig a few times, which is always fun to watch. <laughs> Uh, yeah, he's uh, he's the kind of blue collar player who I think Philly would really uh, really like to root for, but unfortunately, I don't see it happening. Yeah, at least not uh, not until you know mid year. But um, uh, then, first year GM out there, he's going to realize that team is falling the fuck apart, and he needs to rebuild. And he could really, you know, he could turn Bumgarner into some some quality pieces. And you know, we still have a lot of quality pieces left to offer. So, you know, I mean, that, that could be where you see Adonis Medina go. Um, you just got to bank on Adonis Medina having a good start to his year this year. Um, let's move on to some of uh, baseball's proposed rule changes. So have you had a chance to, to look at any of those yet? In passing, yes, I've kind of skimmed over them a little bit. I love the idea of having a three, a three batter minimum for elite pitchers, although I don't think it's going to happen. Um, universal DH, it's only a matter of time. Yeah, I hate the DH. I wish they would take it off, take it away completely. 
I love seeing pitchers at home runs. It's one of the coolest things in baseball, and they're going to take that away from us. <laughs> I mean, even as a Phillies fan, it was pretty fucking awesome to see Bartolo Colon rounding the bases, and we'll never get to see something like that again. So that's one thing I do not want to see. Yeah, I I hate that it, that it takes away the strategy of the game to me. You know, the, the usage and the way bullpens are constructed now, especially in the NL. Um, you know, and the way that, that NL managers have to perform their jobs versus the AL managers. I, I love the strategy involved, um, you know, from, from everything. I know the game's a little too overly specialized at this point, um, you know, and, and that would certainly help that. Um, I, I can not stand the age. I, I, if, if you're, I don't care if you're a pitcher or what, you're still, a, that's like, at a certain point, kickers don't need to wear fucking pads. They're not football players, right? Well, they fucking are. They should go hit somebody. They should be like that fat fuck from Penn State. They should knock someone the hell out, right? They're okay, still exactly. They still yep. goddamn hell. They still got to go touch somebody out there in a violent manner. Awesome. Pitchers, pick up a goddamn piece of wood. Go stand in the box and swing. That's it. That's all I'm looking for here. Sit your ass in the box and let's go. I hate the DH, man. I could talk about that for hours. It's terrible. Oh, man. It doesn't take that much of it doesn't take that much away from the entertainment of the game if you have a pitcher at that. I mean, sometimes you have the guys like the Carlos Zambranos who can go up there and hit two fifty with seven, eight, nine home runs in a season. It's not like all pitchers are freaking terrible hitters either. In fact, most of them are actually pretty decent hitters. Yeah, sure. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we we got to see it with Cliff Lee. Cliff Lee was a pretty damn good hitter. So you remember Cliff Lee's first start? Sam Fran. I think he went like eight innings. I, I think it was five no hit innings to start. I can't remember offhand, but I know he took to the deepest part out there and he took yep. it off the ball. Hilarious to me. I loved Cliff. From that from that swing on, he was the guy. Um, he was a man. But um, but yeah, man. You know, it, to me, it, it it removes an element of the game. And I, I think one of the biggest things is baseball and sports in general are, are try to make their sport and their products attractive to people who have no interest in being attracted to it you know that that to me doesn't make any sense if you're a baseball fan if you're a baseball guy or you're a girl whatever if you're a baseball person you like the sport for for what it has to offer and what it has always had to offer you know can you make things you know little adjustments here or there absolutely you know there there are certain minor things you can do but um you know to drastically change your game to, to make it more appealing for people who don't have the patience to enjoy what baseball is and what has to offer I have no time for that, um, you know, and, and what they're trying to do in my mind is put more runs on the board in a manner that isn't fun for me. You know, it's not fun for baseball people, um, you know, so I, I, I have no interest in, in a DH, in a universal DH. Um, I think it's dumb. I, yeah, yeah, although I agree with you, it is going to happen. It's fucked up, but it's going to happen. Um, but uh the, the bullpen pieces, so getting to the over-specialization <laughs> of, uh, you know, of the game, I do think there are some different things that you can do that can help speed up the game. There are certain things that you don't really need. Um, you know, how often do you see, you know, Roy Halladay-type pitchers anymore where a manager comes out with every intention of removing you from the baseball game and you get to talk that manager back to the dugout and keep the ball in your hand? There's, you can probably count those pitchers on one hand. You know, there are so few guys that, that can talk their manager back into the dugout and say, no, the ball's in my goddamn hand. I don't really think managers have to walk the hell back out anymore. I think if the change is there, point to the fucking bullpen, get the next guy in. You know, I, I don't think that we need that moment in time where people walk out. I think that beats things up. Um, you know, the over-specialization, I don't know that it should ever be... Uh, you know, thank you for your throwing your one pitch to get this guy out. Now I'm going to make, now I'm going to Joe Madden this and put your ass in left field for a batter. And I'm going to bring you back in. And I'm going to put another guy. Like, that's absurd. No one God wants damn, to. They have the freaking phone in the dugout in the bullpen for a reason. Just use it. Just yes. call the bullpen coach. Be like, hey, we're setting this guy in. No reason to trot out to the mound. I mean, you, obviously, you got to go to the umpire. You got to hand over the uh, the lineup card and your, your lineup changes. But. Yes, well, like well, well, it's absurd. 
Um, but I do think that there is there is something that needs to be done about the the bullpen usage um, in a way that semi manages it. You know, I, I I dislike what what Joe Madden was, was had done last year. Um, you know, in particular, I, you know, I joked about it a moment ago, but you know, to me, it, it drove me insane to sit there and see a pitcher throw one pitch, go play left field, come back in and pitch, go back out to left field, then go back in. All this, all of this game unbearable to watch. This is why I love the three batter minimum. Is then you don't have to. I. It kind of it might take us something away from having like a lefty specialist in the bullpen, but I don't like having specialists in the bullpen. I just like having guys who go out there and throw, not guys who come in for one batter. With me, there are look. If if you want to be a specialist, learn how to move the fucking baseball as a pitcher. This way and this way. And you're fucking fine. You got to be able. If you're a right-handed pitcher, you can't have a ball that just fucking goes down and in. You got to have something that moves to the side of the plate too. It makes no fucking sense to me. You can create specializations within a repertoire for every single pitcher that gets on the mound that gets both righties and lefties out. Nobody deserves to be making millions of dollars just because they're left-handed and they can face one batter, you know, once every other day. Yeah, it's insane. Yeah. I, What's one batter every other day? Pat Neshek. Did you see that jackass was on a top 10 relievers list in, in all of baseball? Oh, my God. That made me so angry. <laughs> I can imagine that probably made your skin crawl. I was so, like, has, has no one walked? Fuck it, whatever. Um, but, um, you know, I think that uh, that one of the things that they could do, you know, is, and we talked about it last year, um, you know, was limiting the amount of pitchers that can be used in a game. Um, you know, I, I think that it, it opens up and still allows for some creativity. But you know, some of these bullpen guys, you know, you, it creates a need for bullpen pieces who can go two, three, four, five innings, and you need more than just one of those guys in the bullpen now. Uh, you know, so I do think that there there are some changes that they can make to that. Whether it is, hey, you can only use four or five pitches a game. Hey, you can only use. Uh, or every pitcher that comes in has to face at least three batters, um, you know, or, you know, has to get to the end of the frame, whatever it is. Um, you know, I do think that there are some things that you can do. Um, before we sign off on on the Phillies segment here, and, and I hope to God we have more segments uh, in the extremely near future for some breaking news podcasts. Um, but uh, with in light of the Real Muto thing today, changes uh, or the trades that we've made thus far throughout, not trades, the uh, free agent signings, excuse me, that we've made throughout the process this year. Um, If you had to put a percentage on it right now, at how confident you feel that Bryce Harper is going to be a Philadelphia Philly by opening day? If I had to put a percentage on it, I would go 90%. 90%. Roughly. 10% 10% is still on the toilet, just waiting for that bowel movement to complete. 10% still taking a shit. <laughs> fair enough, fair enough. Um, I, I, I'm going to sit uh, I'm gonna sit at 97%. Um, and the 3% for me is the chip malfunction in my arm for every time I sit. <laughs> um, which is such a shit show. Um, and then, just for shits and giggles, um, Manny Machado... And any news, you know, surrounding him at this point have, has gone so quiet. Um, would you bet on on Manny or, or allow Manny Machado to bet on himself for one year in Philadelphia? Would you give him a one year contract worth forty forty five million dollars? Um, that's that's a tough call, but I think I would go through with it. I mean, just a one one year deal. See how he fits in. See how he does. Um, I would go through with it. Yeah. I'd, I would let him do that. See, I think I, I would do the same. You know, I would sit there and, um, you know, one of, if if you care about winning baseball games, which we don't know that Manny does yet, truthfully, um, but if he cares about winning baseball games and, and with the roster and, and that clubhouse that we have right now, they're going to win baseball games this year. They're, they, in theory, should be a very good baseball team this year. Um, that's a hell of a sales pitch. You know, hey, sure, we're giving this guy $40 million, for argument's sake, he had a bet on himself, but you also got to integrate yourself into this clubhouse with Gabe Kapler, with potentially Bryce Harper, 
uh, with former MVP in um, uh, Andrew McCutcheon. You get to watch Aaron Nola pitch, which is fucking fantastic. Um, you know, Nick Pavetta pitch should be fun, theoretically. Um, Jake Arrieta might kill someone. <laughs> you never know. It's a few matter of time. Just going to take out an axe and beat someone to hell? I don't know. Um, you know, but I, I think that that would be an interesting option. It would be something that I would certainly entertain. If, if news came out that said Manny was interested in, in an extremely high dollar one year deal to, to prove it, you know, for to propel him to that next contract, um, yeah, I, I'd pick up the phone immediately. Um, you know, and, and then just see what we, you know, see what we can't get out of him. Um, and then hope to God that Alec Bohm, you know, is on a fast track to, to the majors. Because after one year, I'm pretty sure that Manny Machado would go elsewhere, regardless of how great Philadelphia may be. Um, you know, and then Alec Bohm's going to have to be pretty much fucking ready. Um, which I'm still not sold on him as a third baseman, but that's fine. Um, do you have any final thoughts here on, on the Philadelphia Phillies, on the Real Muto trade? Um, you know, I'm super stoked for, for opening day at this point, man. I, every year I sit there and think, well, who's going to get the, you know, the, the loudest applause or the loudest boo, um, you know, in, cause it is Philadelphia. Um, and I have no idea right now. Like it's so cool. It just, it may not be quiet the entire day. Well, the loudest applause, obviously, unless there's some unforeseen circumstances is going to be Bryce Harper. Well, yes. Right now. My chip Keep is your fingers crossed. Uh, it's, we're still going. Uh, as of right now, I think the loudest applause would be, uh, I'm like guessing that, Nola that. would be the opening day starter. I think he would get it. Yeah. Uh, and yeah. loudest booze? I don't know. Maybe Oduble? Maybe Oduble's Gabe? Not getting booed. Gabe Kapler's not getting booed either. I don't know. There's still a faction of the fan base that dislikes him. So I don't think anybody's getting booed on the opening day. I think everybody, the fans are going to be pretty optimistic. I'm pretty optimistic. Um, love the Real, Real Muto trade. I think it's going to make the team so much better in the short term, which is what we're focused on now because we're in, obviously, win now is the uh, mentality. And if the, even if this team doesn't get Bryce at this point, I think they still should win the National League East. If they do get Bryce, I think they're a World Series contender. So I'm pretty damn optimistic. I think they need another starting pitcher before they're a World Series contender, but I dig the optimism. Um, Yeah, I think my final thought is is I'm sticking with it. Uh, Gabe Kapler's going to be the manager of the year. Um, (laughs) He's going to manage the hell out of this roster. But um, we will be back. So... You're going to post the uh, the actual podcast segments uh, tonight or tomorrow. I will have them up within the next hour. Solid. Um, so it's, it's 10 after 11 right now. I will have them up by 10 after 12. You can mark the words. We're sending baby Steve over with a beer bottle to hit over your head. A beer bottle and a bad knee. So <laughs> come limping into your room. <laughs> um, hilarious when I picked him up the other day, by the way. Um, which, by the way, he did not dislocate his ankle. Um, Thank God. He's I know. Enough. So, yeah. I, I goes through enough shit. Anyway, um, but yeah, what, moral of this ending is we'll, we'll have uh, more content out uh, tonight, and then I still have the Scotty Kingery article that will come out soon. Um, I'll probably write one of the 76ers now as well. Um, you know, and what uh, what some of the contracts may look like going forward for those three guys who are going to be left unsigned, um, you know, or you know, left unsigned or opt out going into the off season, um, and uh, and we'll see what other pieces we can't uh, collectively come up with. I know, like I said, Kevin's on sabbatical for a little while. Um, it's not football season, so LJ doesn't care about life. Uh, maybe Steve did not dislocate his ankle, but he very well may this week. So who knows? Uh, and uh, He's maybe on the DL, which by the way is no longer a thing in the ma- major leagues. It's the yeah. list now. It's all, yeah, I saw that. Whatever. Um, but yeah, we'll have more content coming out. Um, and we promise eventually we'll get decent video segments one day. I'll have a couple articles coming out. I'm going through writer's block right now, but I'll come up with something within the next day or so. 
I don't know that you can consider yourself going through writer's block. You're the most recently published article we have. True. <laughs> True. Um, yeah, but I'll have something within the next two days. We'll see what it is. Probably Sounds an opinion good. piece. What did you say? Probably an opinion piece on something. Opinion piece. All right. <laughs> Sounds good. All right, man. Well, we'll close this one out. The Always Next Year podcast. Uh, be sure to uh, check us out on our website, www.alwaysnextyearpodcast.com. It'll be in the uh, in the link or subscription, whatever the hell it is. I don't know how YouTube works, but he'll put it in there. Uh, and then be sure to subscribe to the podcast on Apple uh, Stitcher, Apple Podcast Stitcher, Spotify, SoundCloud, Spreaker. I feel like there's something else I'm missing, but fuck it, whatever. Um, subscribe. Our podcast show is better than our videos. Absolutely. <laughs> our videos ain't bad, though. But yes, our podcast show is a lot better. True. All right. I'll close it out for tonight. <laughs>